Hey YouTube, life's too short to have a naturally aspirated 1HZ, so this video is going to give you some info and tips on how to install a TD-05 on a 1HZ and how to tune it and set it up properly. I'm not going to show you how to undo every single nut and bolt, but I am going to show you some tips and tricks to make your install quicker, cleaner and easier than mine. This is the standard DTS turbo kit. Dump and front pipe, some nice cast piping, silicon hoses, clamps, all the usual stuff you'd expect in the kit. Nice manifold, nice TD-05, bunch of gaskets. Easy little install manual. And then on the left side of the rules, just some consumables I got. Stuff for a service. Little adapter on the manifold to make cooler piping a little bit neater. Here are your exhaust studs. Genuine Toyota. There's a part number. Some fresh lock locking nuts from Toyota. And a bit of ultra grey here for the sun. I'm not going to use a supplied return oil fitting. It's going to use this bolt on one. I just don't like the sounds of stabbing a sump. For those of you who are interested, the front pipe looks like it'll bolt straight up to a standard muffler. At this flange here, travels along the standard route up to the turbo. I might put that on for a dyno just to capture some power changes, but might just slap on the stainless stuff straight away, see what happens. In preparation to removing the exhaust manifold and other components, it would be good to use your favourite penetrating lubricant to lube up all the bolts and let them marinate for a couple of days. All the exhaust manifold, the exhaust flange, and your front pipe flange as well, and depending on what parts you're keeping, the whole lot. If I can remove the exhaust without a grinder, I'll ramp it up on the dyno for power comparison between standard exhaust and a three inch exhaust. Exhaust manifold came off a little bit too easy. Got a snap stud in there, which is just great. This car had an EGR block off up there, which I'll leave in place, bolt it up there, get rid of the pipe. Had to make a quick temporary little block off on the exhaust manifold. Just made it out of about five, six mil mild steel. Should hold for ages. If you've got a broken exhaust stud, grab your easy out, make sure your hole's nice and centered. When you drill, make sure it's nice and square. Chuck your easy out in, and if all goes well, it should remove pretty easy like this one. Now the exhaust manifold's ready to go on. Fresh genuine studs installed in preparation for the turbo and exhaust manifold assembly to go on. Probably a good time now to drop some coolant so we can hook up our coolant lines. Try not to make a soup kitchen like I have. 
Here's a completed turbo assembly. I find it much easier to assemble and torque it on a workbench than in an engine bay. Cruisers have a big engine bay so it's easy to shuffle in there. Got the manifold all torqued up. I just um, decided to install my front dump pipe so I can route my coolant lines and make sure nothing touches or foul against it. Here's my front dump pipe. Make sure you have a flex join somewhere in your system. And it's also good to have provisions for a pyro. This down pipe fits surprisingly well. My dump front pipe fitted up pretty good, but now where the pyro fitting is directly in line with one of the water lines so I'll have to give it some adjustment I'll let you know how it turns out I managed to adjust this water line a little bit out of the way it's pretty close to the pyro but I'm not pushing against it I guess the other line is pretty straightforward now I just got to do the oil feed and we're good for some spools. When it's time to install your oil return fitting, the manual says install it right next to the fifth bolt hole. I recommend offsetting it slightly so you can install your sump bolts. I decided to go between the fifth and the sixth bolt hole from the rear. That allows me to get directly below the turbo and is much closer to the factory return boss. This is how my oil return fitting turned out. I bashed the mating surface flat to try and aid with the seal. Gave it a deluxe silicon on the back. See how this turns out. Did a quick little test fit. Everything went well except for this sandwich plate failed against the back of the sump with these two locating studs. Very snug, so I had to give the sump a little bit of an adjustment with a hammer. But it didn't take much and it came good. This lip here was fouling on the sandwich plate. So just got my trusty hammer, gave it a little bit of a roll, being really careful not to distort the flange, make sure that it stays square or you'll have a pretty crappy seal. Doesn't take much, maybe two or three mil, and now it's snug and easy to get back in there. Clean the bottom of your block up as best as you can. The hardest section by far is this rear section. Just take your time, razor blade, green scotch bright. Be gentle, don't distort the surface. That didn't go too bad, not the prettiest job. Put a little bit of extra at the back of the sump so I don't want to have any leaks at all, especially not at the back there because it's hard to access. Um, just pretty much just going to delicately put it in place, bolt it, have a few bolts ready in your pocket so you can sit it in place. Yeah, good luck. Alright, so we got all the lines sorted. Not the prettiest, but it's in there. Hopefully sealed up alright. 
all pressure sender was a bit of a pain it only fits in one orientation the standard pressure sensor is tilted towards the right a little bit and then the oil feed has the elbow at the bottom had to go through the manifold because the line was a little bit short again not the prettiest but it should work Should we do a sneaky little test with just the front pipe? Yeah. Let's see if it boosts. Sweet, we got oil pressure. baseline NA run now we'll ramp it up straight after the turbo is installed with no added diesel no changes to adjust the graph scale a little bit to show the AFRs super lean power curve uh, with a little bit of boost stops being smooth as it goes completely lean so just a nice little comparison of NA to just the turbo installed uh, now we'll crank the diesel in see how much gains we make I'll just do a quick ramp run to show you some EGTs on a very lean tune. this diesel pump there's a protective cover just here you have to remove that to access the diesel screw that cap was painful to remove had to peel it off like a banana it had little press tabs on there I also put a black mark with some 
center punch marks on it just as reference from where we started. Just going to turn it up a quarter of a turn as per the DTS manual and see what we make. On the install manual provided by DTS, they're nice enough to tell you that it only needs a quarter of a turn on the fuel screw. We'll see what it does in the real world and adjust as needed. Also, grab yourself a clutch too when you start making power with the standard units. They won't last very long. Got my little safety observer here. This is a power run with a quarter turn on the fuel screw. back-to-back -back runs on just a quarter turn on the fuel screw adjustment. Not too bad but it definitely needs the altitude sensor to read a bit of boost to get those AFRs stabilized a bit better. It's running a little bit rich for my liking but we're going to wind the boost up anyway later on. Well, that's another video. Compared to NA, the power difference is about 73 horsepower to 110, and AFRs are changing from about 16 to 20. This graph here shows our peak torque's gone from about 210 to 310 foot pounds. On this graph here, you can see the impact diesel has on boost. Gained a couple of PSI in the mid-range just from adding some diesel. Light blue was the first power run of the day without diesel. Dark blue was the one of the last ones we just done. Here's a shot of the DTS warranty. There you have it. Next video will modify the altitude compensator to behave like a boost compensator in Redino. Also fabricate some cooler piping for the front mount. Might also install a catch can and adjust the baffles below the cam cover. I recommend installing one of your coolant T pieces below your exhaust manifold, just after the thermostat. That'll aid in reducing clutter and giving you some more room near the pyro. This DTS kit's a good quality kit and really easy to install. It will take you one day if you stab the sump, or one and a half days if you remove the sump like I did, each to their own. Hope you like this vid, stay safe, and wind the boost up.